Llama 3.2. It just got released a couple of days ago and folks are pretty excited about it. A few YouTubers were sponsored by Meta for this release. Notably, I wasn't. And looking at some of the videos that were sponsored, well, it seems like they made a few odd choices. But anyway, Meta, next time, uh, I'm available. My name is Matt Williams and I was a founding member of the Olama team. I left in January and now I'm focused on building up this YouTube channel where I tend to look at all things local AI. And Llama 3.2 definitely fits into that category. So I thought I'd take a look at the model from a few different perspectives. First, I'll just start asking some questions. Then we'll summarize some content. And then we'll look at the tools capability. Finally, I'll take a look at one of the ways I actually use models. I think it should be kind of fun. So let's first take a look at the announcement blog post from Meta. Llama 3.2 revolutionizing edge AI and vision with open customizable models. Right up at the top, it talks about the 11B and 90B vision models, as well as the 1B and 3B text only models. The vision models are also really good at text. The next bullet points out a context length of 128K tokens for the smaller models, but doesn't mention a context size for the larger models. We see that the vision models do the exact same thing as the 3.1 models in addition to supporting vision. Scroll down and we see a bit more about the image reasoning use cases supported by the vision models, such as document level understanding, including charts and graphs, captioning of images, and visual grounding tasks, such as directionally pinpointing objects in images based on natural language descriptions. This sounds pretty cool because this has always been a problem when adding docs with graphs to a RAG system. Of course, they include some benchmarks, but we all know my opinion on those, so we'll just get right past that. There are some cool demo GIFs in the article further down, so it's definitely worth taking a look at. But let's move on to actually using it. Of course, I'm gonna be using Olama, which is the best way to run models locally. You can find out more about Olama at olama.com. Click the button in the middle of the page to download and install it. It's super easy, and I've done tons of tutorials on how to get started, so you should definitely check that out. Then run Olama pull llama 3.2 colon 1b to grab the 1 billion parameter model. Okay, so what questions do we wanna ask? I can't look at any model without asking my favorite, why is the sky blue? And that is blazingly fast. Turn on verbose and try that again. 127 tokens per second is kind of amazing for an answer that is that good. Now, a lot of folks like to go straight to the riddles and logic puzzles to test a model. In fact, they will grade a model purely on its ability to count the number of R's in a word, something that models were not traditionally designed to be able to answer. It's like me grading your worthiness based on whether you can hold your breath for more than two minutes. That's a skill that isn't even relevant for most of us, though I used to work with a guy whose dad held a world record in free diving, which required that skill. They even made a movie about him. Oh, while I'm mid-tangent, let me remind you to like and subscribe. I like to say I'm working on my first million subscribers and only need about 967,000 more to get there. Your help to achieve that would be greatly appreciated. Let's stop the tangent and go back to the model. Now, a much more relevant question is something you might actually ask. I have a new coffee shop on Bainbridge Island. Come up with five great photo ideas that I can take for an advertisement with, that would showcase the shop. And it comes up with some great answers. How about generating a few tweets to help get folks to the shop? Again, awesome answers. But some folks need a riddle question. So let's try that classic three murderers in a room one. Guess what? It gets it wrong. It's a stupid question and I'm not all that bothered by it. Let's go back to a question that is actually useful. I have a five-year-old daughter who loves asking questions that I learned the answer to 40 years ago, but have since forgotten. 
And so getting a model to answer this is fantastic, though they all do pretty good at it. Explain photosynthesis. The fact that I get an answer in less than three seconds is the magic here. Let's go to another favorite question I see a lot, but you know, most times I see folks ask the question and they get what they think is the wrong answer, but they don't seem to realize the problem is mostly how they ask the question. Often when we ask a model to do something, we make assumptions that the model knows what we're thinking. Asking a model to take two numbers and decide which is bigger is actually a bit ambiguous because depending on the type of number, either one could be bigger. If it's a version number, then 8.21 is the right answer. But if it's a floating point number, then 8.8 .8 is the right answer. So I like to be a little bit more specific in my questions and it gets it right. But if you ask the right question, most models tend to get it right. Not always but they tend to get it right. Let's try another. The sum of two numbers is 10 and the product is 25. What is the difference between the two numbers? Explain each step in your solution. And we see it does a pretty great job at this. Finally, let's ask the R's in strawberry question, even though it doesn't really say much about the abilities of the model. It gets it wrong, in a way that I haven't really seen before. It's so wrong, but who cares? I'll exit out of here and try running the 3 billion parameter model. We won't do all the questions, but a few should be fun. Let's start with the R question, and it's wrong in the usual way. The difference between the two numbers is nice, and it gets it perfectly right. The three killers question is interesting, getting the right answer but with terrible logic to get there. So let's move on to a different use case. One of the things that blog post talks about was summarization. So let's try that out. Now the 3 billion and 1 billion models support a context size of 128K, but Olama configures models to be 2K by default. So let's create a new model that uses a larger context size. I'll set it to 16K, save the model file, and then run o the Olama create command. Now I can run that new model, summarize this video script down to a single paragraph, and then I'll add the script for my recent video on environment variables. And the result is pretty great. Another thing it's apparently really good at is tool use. Now this specifically refers to the newer, less reliable approach versus the tool use approach added about a year ago. I look forward to the newer approach being as good as that older one, but anyway, we can go to the blog post on tool use on the Olama page, and it points to some sample code for Python and JavaScript. So I'll grab the JavaScript code and paste it into my VS Code editor. Now, one of the interesting things about using large language models is that the answers can be different each time you ask. So just because you get an answer that's right or wrong one time, doesn't mean you'll always get a similar answer. So I'll update this code to repeat the call 10 times. What this example does is make a call to the model and provide an info about a tool that returns flight information. Now the actual function is using mock data, so it doesn't actually query any real site, but it has the same ultimate results. We have a question hard-coded of what is the flight time from New York to LA? The model should tell the app to call the function with NYC and LAX as parameters and get back a JSON blob with a flight time of five hours and 30 minutes, and then turn that into some good text. Let's try it first with Llama 3.2, 3 billion parameters. In 10 tries, it gets it right every single time. Often, even with larger models, this hasn't been the case, so that's pretty impressive. Let's try it with the 1 billion parameter model. And in 10 tries, it got it wrong every single time. That said, I tried this when I first started playing with it and it got it wrong 20% of the time. So, hey. But even larger models get it wrong a lot. Let's try it with Mistral Small, and that's a 22 billion parameter model. Look at the results. It failed four out of 10 times. I'll try with one other model, Fire Functions V2. In other tests with this model, I would get good answers 80% of the time, but now it seems to be getting it right 100% of the time. Okay, so now I wanna change gears a bit and take a look at 
at one of my actual use cases for models to help help create new content. I write my scripts in Obsidian, and one of the plugins I use is called Companion. It offers the ability to complete the text I'm actually writing. I've modified it a bit to use a different prompt, but you can see I'm using the 3 billion parameter model with the larger context. Now I'll paste the first few paragraphs of the script for the video on environment variables. And every time I pause, it continues writing for me. When I see some text I like, I can just press tab to accept each word and then I can continue. It's not always perfect, but it works well often enough that I find it really helpful. So that's a quick intro to the new Llama 3.2 models. I was hoping that the vision models would be available by now, but they aren't. The Ulama team is working hard on making them compatible and it looks like they're getting really, really close. So hopefully by the time you see this video, it's out and I have to do an update. What do I think of these small Llama 3.2 text models? Well, I'm quite impressed. They're definitely my favorite of the smaller models blowing away everything else out there. What do you think? I'd love to hear your comments down below. And if you have any questions about anything, you can leave those down there too. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.